Should you buy the Suray 50 millimeter 1.3X anamorphic? In the spirit of full disclosure, I should tell you that Suray sent me the pre-production model of this lens for free so I can make this video. My name is Cody Warner. I'm a filmmaker. I make videos on YouTube. I just have to say that I am super intrigued by anamorphic lenses. I'm obviously shooting on it right now. I'm gonna try to shoot as much of this video on here as I can. A lot of the B-roll that you'll see of the lens is shot with the lens through two different mirrors. I tried to get two lenses so I could shoot B-roll of the lens with the lens, but it's a pre-production model. They only have a limited number, so this is where we're at. Here's what I wanna do. I wanna show you a couple of things that I've shot with it over the last three weeks of having it, a couple of the quirks, a couple of things that are really interesting about it, and then let you make the decision for yourself. Do you wanna buy this thing? I think right now it's $600. Production is gonna be $700. There's a link in the description to the Indiegogo campaign if you wanna pick one up. Yeah, let's go. Let me show you some of the things that I've learned over the last three weeks. So in case you're brand new to anamorphic, there's basically three things that you're getting when you use one of these lenses. One is it's squishing the frame, okay? It's squishing it horizontally. So that 1.33x, that means that you stretch it by 1.33 horizontally or you can squish it by 75% vertically in order to get this look, which is 2.39 to one, you know, which is slightly wider than two to one, which is slightly wider than 16 by nine. A lot of things that go into that, there's videos out there, you can research it if you want to, but that is basically, that's thing number one, you're getting that squish, which gives you this wider frame, which some people think looks more like a movie, more cinematic. Thing number two is those sci-fi looking horizontal crazy lens flares, okay? And that's something that this lens does, very interesting. Third thing is the bokeh, the out of focus elements in the video kind of have this ovular look to them as opposed to a circle which you get with a regular lens. So those are the three things. That's, that's anamorphic in a nutshell. And that's what this lens gives us access to. This is a manual lens, which almost all of my lenses are manual lens, so it's no change for me. It's manual both in focus and also aperture, so you can adjust those both on the lens itself. It doesn't have any electronics in it, so it doesn't communicate with your camera in the way that a normal electronic lens would. I should say they're releasing these lenses to cover APS-C. They have it for Sony, they have it for Fuji, and then they have it for Micro Four Thirds. Those are the different mounts but I'm gonna be talking about the GH5 since that's the mount that I got and that's the camera that I use. On something like a GH5, when you turn on the camera, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna change the focal length of this lens to match whatever it is? And you should say yes, because that focal length is what is adjusting the IBIS, the in-body image stabilization, so that things don't jump around and look weird when you're using such a long lens on something like the GH5. The GH5 does also have built into it an anamorphic de-squeeze so that when you're shooting, you can actually compose a lot better. It doesn't look squished on the back of the camera. You can actually see it the way that it's gonna look. Um, so you can go in, turn anamorphic de-squeeze on, which is gonna help you compose your shots, that sort of thing. I also bought these flashlights. 
<laughs> would show you uh, what I'm talking about with that anamorphic lens flare. The interesting thing about these though is they're LED and they flicker like crazy. Something I found out about the GH5 if you're on this system is there's something called synchro scan. You can turn that on, basically just go to whatever frame rate you would normally use and then toggle down until it stops doing that crazy skipping scanning thing. I have two manual lenses, the Voilander 17 and a half and the Voilander 10 and a half. And they're both great lenses, I absolutely love them. And that's really sort of what I'm comparing this lens to in terms of sharpness. And this thing is impressively sharp, even wide open. I wasn't expecting that at all. In terms of how it feels in your hand, it's metal, it feels solid, it feels like you know, you're holding a, you're holding a device that's gonna help you tell some stories. So as I mentioned, it's a 50 millimeter lens. And I was chatting with one of my friends on the internet, Jay Kyren, and he had a question that's very similar to a question that I had, is how does it compare when you stretch it, how much does that distort on the edges of the image? So I have another 50 millimeter that's just a regular lens, not anamorphic, and I'm gonna do a little comparison here. That was something I was really interested in. Like I said, extremely interesting lens very fun to use and it was new and very fun to learn. You've seen the footage for yourself. You have to let me know in the comments if you're gonna pick one of these up. Thanks so much for being here. If you haven't yet, subscribe, hit the like button, drop the comments, share, share, share it, share the video. <laughs> Thanks. Um, oh, that's that one's strobe though. That, that, got, <laughs> that got me.